Hello, AD60M Dennis here. And uh, I just wanted to do this quick video about the, these batteries that I'm putting together into a 12-volt uh, pack. They're called Lito Kala 32700s. The thing about these batteries is it's very hard to find information about them. Um, I bought them on AliExpress and they came to around $4.21 per cell but they profess to be seven amp hour cells. So that means four in series and um, two in parallel. So four S2P would be a 14 amp hour battery in a very small package. But the thing is, there's no data sheet on these. The thing that really gets me about these is that the seller placed um, a bit of data on the on the sheet or on the page uh, where they're selling them and it says that the nominal voltage is 3.7 volts and yet the charging voltage is 3.65 volts which is odd because if you tried to charge a 3.7 volt cell with 3.65 3.65 volts nothing would happen it says there's a 3 amp um, current for input charge and maximum discharge current is 30 amps so very suspect I want to see the data sheet I want to see what exactly the specs are and not this seller rebranded um, kind of sort of technical data that doesn't make sense to anyone who knows about batteries um, so they profess to be seven amp hours. So I'm a little bit worried that I might have been scammed, but let's, uh, I just wanted to share this with you because I'm gonna be testing uh, these batteries and hopefully they uh, live up to their claim. I hope they hold the capacity that they claim or even close to it. I'd be happy with six amp hours. So let's take a look and I'll, I'll show you right here what I've done so far. So what I have here is a, uh, I got these cells here. There's a cat here on there. <laughs> so they are, I get it in the light here. Lito Kala 32700, 7,000 milliamp hours, 3.2 volt. They came in individual boxes when I received them. I, I got 16 of them. <clears throat> and that's how I got the $4.21 per cell. As you can see here, I did some soldering. So I soldered these in a, uh, as I said, a 4S2P configuration. So totaling uh, 13, about 13 volts. When And these are the two um, points where I would connect positive and negative. But they look legit. Nicely... Uh, Nicely packaged. I got these holders, I think, on eBay. They are 32650 holders, and I'll put a link in the description. But um, really need to uh, give these a test. And I've searched. I've searched on all over the place for any information. I've searched YouTube for any, um, any videos. And all I could find were like Russian videos that I couldn't understand and um, cells that don't look anything like this. So really I want to, um, I may be the first doing this, really I want to review these and see if they're legit. So I've got the BMS hooked up now. Had to uh, figure out some creative way of doing it. Put it on the side, and um, now I'm charging it. Just trying to get some, uh, get it back to normal capacity. But um, it's always a challenge with these: is where to put the BMS. So I'm going to lay it out this way for this particular build. All right, here it is. Uh, the wiring is not as elegant as my uh, previous one. But got it wired up, and it has a blue LED this time. It's trying to figure out how to get that light, uh, that LED 
elsewhere, but this is the best arrangement I can think of. Here's the fuse, here's the charging cable and power port, or I'm going to say power pole. There's a quick shot of the cells. Now to try to wrap this thing up. I don't know if I have the right wrapping for it. So normally I measure out the dimensions, but this time around there's a little bit of a time crunch. I need to get this battery over to uh, my fellow ham before field day, so I don't have time to order the right um, PVC tube wrapping. And this is the one I use for the 4S3P, so hopefully it can shrink enough to cover this. The other one I have is for a uh, 4S2P26650 build, and that it seems is too small, so we'll give this a try. And here's the final product. Um, I actually did this wrapping once, and then one of the wires for the LED got disconnected, and I had to take it apart again and wrap it up again. But uh, there we go. It's a pretty hefty pack. This thing promises to be a 14 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It has power pole with this little uh, cover. It has a 5.5 by 2.1 charging. And I think it came out pretty clean. What do you think? Makes a big difference. What I use uh, for padding at the bottom is uh, pieces of cardboard box from Amazon boxes. Just to do a little padding on the bottom so in case you do slam it, it's not going to completely destroy the bottom or disconnect anything. Used ample Kapton tape. And um, these uh, wires are a little longer than my last build, but I found that when I'm using the uh, distribution box, I like it to be able to lay on the ground and not be hanging at an angle. So, do a little bit of testing and then uh, see how this thing performs. I'm not really as scientific as a lot of people with full drain. I don't have the patience to do that, but... I'll run it for a little bit, charge it for a little bit, and let you know how it goes. All right, it's fully charged. It took a long time because the BMS caps at one amp charge rate. I'm not sure what's going on with that. But I have hooked it up to my FT-857. I'm gonna do a quick full power test on uh, CW here. Let's see how that works. I mean, it's not a true test of the full draw. The 857 goes to 22 amps on 100 watts. So uh, this is the use case that this was built for. Let's see how it performs. Test Got an alert, 15 dB out to VE6WZ, so that's uh, Calgary, I believe. That's 
S5S6 noise. If I turn on the, uh, oh, that's even with noise reduction. Wow. Turn off the noise reduction and stick to the uh, dual bandpass filter. So now that's a CW. Let me uh, readjust it here. The sag seems pretty prominent. Started out at 14 at full, 13.6 when I plugged it in, and now it's at 13.1. And I'll show you here. So just pay attention to this right here. 13.2 is the recovery under load. Right now it's pulling about 0.68 amps on receive. Now when I transmit CW at full power, it's going to sag down to 12. cells that I have. Well, I, got, I got some 26650s from battery hookup and those can output uh, 42 amps continuous and they seem to handle uh, high drain for like this full power test pretty well whereas these Lito color ones um, they don't seem too well suited for that kind of purpose. I mean they work it's just that there's quite a bit of sag there. 14 amp hours in this size is pretty amazing, and I don't really think that's true. Uh, a lot of reviews I've read, um, people actually doing capacity tests, they say they get like uh, 5.8 amp hours out of each cell on average. So even if this were a uh, 12, 11 or 12 amp hour battery with this size, that's pretty amazing. So. As long as it performs, I'm not really so concerned about all these claims of, oh, they're fake and all that kind of stuff. It's more about what do they actually do for me. It's just going. All right, it died. The inverter cut off because of low voltage. It was at uh, like 10.46. And we used up, it's about to go here, 9.396 amp hours. So the battery is now effectively not usable for operation. So what is that? It's supposed to be 14. And we got 9.397 out of it. It rebounded, it's now at 10.73, but it was getting pretty low pretty fast. So there you go, it is not quite as rated, but still more than any other QRP battery I've ever made. So that was a good test. These Litokala 7 amp hour batteries that uh, actually turned out to be about four and a half amp hours of usable power. But I was expecting somewhere around 10 or uh, 11, you know, hopefully even 12. I was hoping for six amp hours per cell. And since they're two in parallel, that would have been 12 amp hours per cell per parallel pair but uh, got four and a half out of it. So that was uh, about five and a half hours continuous um, using about three amps for that whole time. That was a, a desk fan through an inverter at full power. Uh, it was around, I can't remember, maybe 40 watts of continuous usage, maybe less, 35 watts of continuous usage. So that's, uh, I mean, the batteries work. They're not, um, they're not exactly to what I expected. 
So I hope that helps you in your decision making if you're looking at them and wondering if they're legit. It's not like they're just going to, you know, blow up or die on you immediately. I just wanted to give them a try. I mean, at $4.21 each, and it's probably cheaper by the time you watch this, I bet you um, you can't find anything better. And that's probably why they're so popular on AliExpress. I would say that it's a 9.5 usable amp hour battery in uh, lithium iron phosphate uh, so the safest chemistry of lithium for around 45 50 bucks that's that's not bad so i hope that helps you and um, if you like this video please uh, leave a comment or uh, you know subscribe hit the like button and again, I am AD60M, Dennis, uh, here in my garage, my uh, fabrication factory. <laughs> um, hopefully I'll have more uh, on, on these topics soon for you in other videos. Thanks again for watching, 7-3.